Damon D'Amico here, D'Amico Dance Company, Liz Calloway. She's going to help me out with the easy, easy pattern that we did in our Monday night architecture class. That was fun, y'all. A little different. I'll take it all the way through. So we did an underarm turn. One, two, three, and four to a traveling anchor to a three beat hit. Take it over, trap it, pick it up, look at it, send her out, bring her back. Drop triple across for a whip pattern exit. Just like that. Thank y'all. Hit the like button. I'm kidding. All right, so uh, yeah, good luck with that at home. All right, bye, y'all. So underarm turn. So first, this is just an underarm turn to close. I talked to you ladies about making that footwork really tight. Uh, oftentimes today, when the guys are giving you underarm turns, they're moving in opposition. The guys are moving, in, and they're making you ladies like not be able to travel an underarm turn. So for you guys out there, I would say, just remember the rule is you should travel the same distance as the lady on the one, and that way the ladies get to do the traveling. And most all of the uh, styling variations that the ladies do on side passes require that much travel. So for any of the girls that are doing cool stuff on side passes for variations, if we continually move in opposition to her on the one, two, I'm taking away her ability to do any of the variations that she learned elsewhere in a styling class or in my class, whatever. When the, when the guys do give you that super, super short side pass because the hand is going across your face so soon, I showed you ladies that it would be very helpful and you can do this anytime. You don't have to be, this doesn't have to be on a super short side pass or even one that he goes to close. You ladies could choose to be closer to the dude on the three and four of any normal side pass. One, two, super short, be right there next to him and give yourself the option of moving away on your anchor. It creates space enough for you ladies to do any traveling anchor variation you've learned. There is a tendency for ladies to get all the way to the end of their arm on four. So sometimes you ladies are like, here's where I'm used to being on the four. So if the guy's too far away from you, you're stuck with the same normal anchor that you don't want to do, even though you should be liking it and doing it better. But because you tried, you already at the end of your arm on four, even a normal anchor feels uncomfortable to you. So you should always be a little bit closer to the dude on your four so you can at least step away into a normal anchor. So for instance, even if I don't catch Liz's back, I want you to do the super short variation and then do a cha-cha lock away from me, okay? So even though I don't make this too short, she could go super short because she wants to and then she can travel her anchor away from me to the connection that she wants as a variation. Now, on the flip side of that, these are just little bonuses that you guys can do. I could always entice her to be really close to me on the three and four, one, two, and keep her here, and I could move away from her on the five and six to the desired connection that I want. So that's just a nice, cool way to play around with those anyway. In this case, I wanted to catch her and close. So I'm not giving her the idea to go eight feet and then catch her and close and then struggling because we're too far away from each other. So the demeanor of me and my left hand in the connection tells her, hey Liz, do a much shorter three and four. One, two, and I catch her back three and four. Now a lot of guys out there think that it's just enough to touch the lady's back. So they're like, well, I'll touch her back and roll her to close. That didn't tell her anything about not traveling too far. So let's make sure that this feels short and goes across her face sooner. One, two, three, and it makes her step sideways on her four. When she lands there, I'm twisting her so she over rotates past square to the slot so that I can get her to go behind on her five. And then I'm gonna twist her to face me square and make her do a chasse with me. So we're gonna do a side together. Now I'm gonna step through between us. I'm making her go four, why are you twisting me that way? And I'm making her step back five, side close. While I'm going one, two, three, and four, and I'm stepping through between us, five side close. So I'm going in front and she's going behind. So one, two, three, and four, five, and six. It's just a variation that I like to play with. Once I got her there, if I count this normal for you folks out there that aren't doing straight eights, not keeping track of where you are in the measure, I would start this next pattern on a one and I would go three, four, five, lean six. Once I lean on that six, I'm loading her up on her right foot. I'm drawing this circle around her head, 
and sending her away and then bringing her back to me. Boom, boom, and eight. So this goes like this, and I send her seven and eight. So again, if I count that starting on a one, this goes one, two, three, four, five, lean six, seven, and eight. Well, now I've got her loaded up on the foot with rotation right here. I'm going to give her a flipped whip, or in most places y'all call this a reverse whip, a reverse whip exit right here where I'm going to toss the hand. I've already got Liz's momentum moving this way. I don't need to pull her down the slot anymore. Now that she's loaded up like that, I'm going to toss the hand straight away. I'm going to do a drop, triple, and straddle. If I'm giving her a plane exit, I'm going to try to make her turn around on this side of me. I'm not going to try to carry her past me, which is what most every guy on the planet does. I'm going to turn her around before she gets past me and back her down the slot for that exit. If I count this with straight eights timing, then we started on the one of a measure. We one, two, three, and four, did our little styling variation on our anchor on our five and six. Now this becomes the seven, eight, one. This is a three bead hit, hits a nice one right there. If there's a break or an emphasized word or instrument. Seven, eight, one, two, three, lean four. Now five and six, toss it, drop, triple, straddle, turn her around before she gets to you and send her down the slot, right? And from the other side, if I go one, two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, eight, one, two, three, lean four, five, and six, drop, triple, straddle, and flip, and send the lady out. I'm gonna do that again. As I take the lady over here, I told you guys, you need to, when you get her to this part, you have to turn your palm up. If you don't believe me, lead it with your palm down. Go ahead, try it. Go ahead, go ahead. And then put a message in the comments <laughs> saying, why the hell does that work? And I'll say, I don't know, but you should have listened to me the first time. And so take that palm up. So if you go palm up, she will let you take that over her head. If you leave your palm like it is, she will not let you take that over her head, okay? So it's nice and light. So this is seven, eight, one, two, three, lean four, five and six, drop triple seven and eight, and one, two, three and four. From the top, one, two, three and four, five and six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, and eight, and one, two, three, and four. And that's what we ended up doing in the class. Thank you so much, Liz. I appreciate you. Hit that thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and share with your friends. Thanks.